Hello, and thanks for joining me. Well, I pretty much got her done. Uh, this is an XY table for your drill press. Uh, some people call it a slide table, which makes sense. Uh, it's going to have calibrated dials on both axes that I haven't done yet. I'll do that in a separate video. i gotta got to make some for my life anyway. Uh, but anyway, it, it utilizes a wood core and it works really well. It's got steel guides. Uh, it's got 8 inches of travel this way and this axis has a full 12 inches of travel. And that's way more than adequate for a lot of stuff. It's bigger, your, bigger than your most vices. So, anyway, let's get on with it and see what it takes to build this thing. Okay, I, I'm going to use a piece of laminated beam that somebody gave me for the core of our slide table. Uh, to my surprise, the grain was oriented all in one direction. Uh, which makes sense after I thought about it. Uh, they want it very rigid uh, lengthwise. Anyway, I've cut a couple of pieces here. This is a, each piece is a 1 and 5 eighths and I need a total of 2 inches thick so I'm going to plane down uh, these pieces to a little over 1 inch and then glue them together. And then plane it to the final size after I do the glue up. Uh, but for the core of your slide table, if you don't have any laminated beam, just use plywood. Uh, you could use solid, solid wood too, but uh, you got to be careful with solid wood because depending on the way the grain is oriented, uh, it'll warp. Uh, in other words, if you put the grain going this way and then another piece going this way, because the, the wood expands and contracts different with humidity, it'll warp the your slide table and that's something you don't want. So I'm going to finish planing these down to a little over one inch and then uh, do a glue up on them. I this a little bit over so if it's a little bit out of alignment I can trim it after I after the glue dries. Can't have too many clamps. I'm gonna put about 600 on here. <laughs> Slight exaggeration. Okay, I got this laminated and I'm gonna take it down to I guess about two and a quarter. It has to be two inches. I'll just give myself a little bit to play with there. Two and three eighths right now. Hopefully three quarter inch, we'll see. I don't think this will go on there. Nope. Okay, this is my sacrificial sled. <laughs> Okay, this is a leftover scrap from the table we made. Uh, this is what's going to have to fit in the slot. So let's see how close we are. Wow, I 
believe that's it. It's got uh, maybe a half thousand play in it. Yeah, that's perfect. Okay, I've made kind of a template here. Uh, the crosshatch areas are what need to come out of here. So what we're going to do is we're going to transfer the lines right here. It's like that. I'm going to remove those two strips right there. That will Like that. Cut it on those marks. You could do this with a fence, but I'd be afraid to run a run the short edge of a piece of wood on the fence. This way it'd be okay, but cut off box is really the easiest way to do it. Here we go. This is not real critical. It's critical that it's square, but it's not critical. I mean, this three quarter inch is obviously the width of that is very critical. The width of this, I'm going to make some two inch pieces, so I made it just a hair over that. Uh, we'll have to cut a slot this way, right here. But first, I'm going to cut the other side. Let's make sure I got that oriented right. It's kind of confusing. That's good. Good, good, good. Kind of confusing, huh? Okay. Right here, I was going to cut a half inch slot. From about here to here. I cut a slot this way for uh, the block for my threaded piece. It'll all come together as we progress here, but right now I want to cut that slot. So I folded the paper here and it's centered this way. And that's how far the bit is from my fence. And it's not real critical. Uh, I set these blocks here so that it penetrates about that far here and almost through this side. So I'll go back and forth on these blocks. Now I got the depth set just right right now but it, I can't take all that at one time so I'm going to drop it down and I'm going to count turns on my height adjustment one two three four five six seven eight nine ten Let's start out right there ten turns
I went a little further than I wanted to, but it'll be all right. That'll be the block that's threaded for my cross for my lead screw. This is a guide. Now I got to do the same thing right here. That's going to be a little more tricky. Okay, on this router table I can put the fence on the other side. It's not the way I normally do it. But that gives me a little extra depth of cut. I think. That should do it. Okay, I got a piece of this 3 8 black iron pipe. I'm going to cut the threads off it. Turn the end of it down and drill a hole and braze that into there. That'll be an extension right here so that our dial won't go underneath the edge of the table. Uh, so I'm going to cut this and turn the end down and then braze it in there. Okay, I've drilled a pilot hole for a Acme tap. I've never used an Acme tap before. Uh, it's got a center in the top of it. I got a little roll pin that's the right diameter. I'm going to put that in the chuck. It's very important that these threads are straight. Okay, I hope this works good. I don't see why it shouldn't, but uh, it would make sense that Acme taps take a lot more effort. They've got square teeth. Or square threads. Well, there it is. This is my Acme thread block. I've got to countersink these screws, but these wood screws will hold that block in place. Okay, I got all these little blocks made. Uh, I'll show you what they're for. This one has got the Acme thread in it, and it goes right here. This one here 
I'll have a bushing pressed in it. It'll go right there. This one right here, I'll turn that down, put that in there and braise it. And then put that bushing in the end right there. And it'll be right here. The reason for that is so that when I turn the uh, adjustment on the slide table, that the adjustment doesn't run into the table that is coming in and out. Well, actually, so it doesn't run into here. See, that'll go in. This will move like that. Uh, this is what keeps everything aligned. Uh, right now I'm going to turn this down, insert that into there, and brace it. Yeah, it's really just just almost too big in there after you take out after you uh, take out the seam inside there, but I think it'll work. That goes in there, and this gets pressed into there. One day I'll get an arbor press. Okay, I've got all the blocks made. Did some of that off camera. Uh, ground those bushings off where they're flush. Uh, should have had shorter bushings. I ended up uh, tack welding that uh, a little quicker than, than brazing. Anyway, this, this goes in here. That block goes in the end of this shaft. And one of them goes here. And the other one will go on the bottom. Okay, it's starting to take shape. The nut right here is held captive in the middle. And be a lock collar here and a lock collar here. This will be bolted to the plate. And this will be bolted to the bottom of the plate. We'll slide with the plate. Here's a trick that I use to leave this vise on my XY table, which is what we're building now, a different version of it. 
I use these. I want to drill through something or hand hold something. I'm just going to clean the edges of these holes up. It works good for woodworking too where you need to drill through something. Now I'm transferring the runner position. Okay, I got this plate a, a little bit skewed on that runner. Uh, this plate isn't exactly square anyway, but I got to ensure that this runner is at a right angle to this runner. So I checked the square, and this runner is square to this edge, but I'm a little bit off, so I got to make this plate just a hair off also. Uh, by about a sixty-fourth of an inch. I think we're good. That that may not make a difference, but uh, aim for perfection and settle for a little bit less. I think I'm going to leave that out. Because if there's any error in position this way, when I put that bolt in, it'll try to bow that runner. And I don't think there's going to be enough forces on this table to bow that half inch thick runner. Uh, if there is enough force, it's probably going to break the wood anyway. So all i got to do is transfer my holes here, drill, and mount it. Got to thread these holes still. There's always some error in these things. That's yeah, a little bit of a loose fit there. Well, I got a set screw lock colors, which are not my favorite. And I may replace them with a split lock color, two piece lock color. Uh, even a one piece with a clamping would be good. The two piece is pretty nice. Either way, would be fine. Uh, worst part about these, they mar the shaft, and, and if you ever have to move them, you have a lot of a lot of trouble you gotta fix your shaft.
Okay, how am I going to transfer those holes? Okay, I drilled and tapped these four holes. I drilled some holes there. I'm not sure I'm going to use them yet. I'll show you in a minute. I'll go this way. I also countersunk those holes right there. I was going to put quarter twenty uh, through the uh, top, but I decided to try it this way. Uh, it may be adequate. If it isn't, I'll put quarter twenty from the other side. But I believe this will be totally adequate. These are uh, ten twenty fours, and they should be the right length where they don't stick through. This, it'll give a, a quarter inch threads to work with, hopefully. Kind of afraid of that. I think some of these blocks may be twisted a little bit. I'll probably have to uh, ream the bushings out a little bit or turn the shaft down a little bit. That's something you should be aware of when you're making this shaft. Go ahead and make it several thousands undersize. It's not going to be spending any kind of high speed and it won't matter a bit. Anyway. Yeah, it's fairly hard to turn. I had a problem. So there's one axis. Oh yeah, that's perfect didn't come through at all. These holes right here are for the uh, center nut. They were going to go right there to hold that. And that way you could lift up on it without it coming apart. But I got a feeling it's going to be heavy enough to where it's not going to come apart anyway. So put a pair of vice grips on this and we'll see how it moves. Beautiful.
Drum roll, please. A little bit tight. I believe that's going to work good. Mount a bench vise on there. Bolt it to your drill press table. We'll be ready to go. Okay, I've had this apart a couple of times. Biggest problem I had was the lead screws. The Acme threaded rod was warped. I believe I got it this time though. Oh yeah, way better. Okay, I've got this XY table here, and you might ask why I'm building a new one if this one works. I've used the heck out of this thing. It's, it's calibrated in thousands right there. It's got some nice dovetail slides. Uh, under here it's got uh, rods for slides. And I've used it very successfully, but it's got one problem. Uh, these rods under here flex under pressure. Watch what happens. I'm drilling, you know, like a half inch hole or something. You see the table moving? I don't know if that shows up on the video or not. But these, these rods right here are flexing. And I, I never dreamed two three-quarter inch rods like that, hardened rods, would flex. But they flex quite a bit. It moves a good eighth of an inch under quite a bit of pressure. Usable? Yes. Ideal? No. So, this new slide table is going to address that and hopefully be... Uh, Fairly easy to build. Well, there's the underside of my old XY table. It's been a good one. Very useful. But I believe the new one's going to be a little better. Well, there it is all finished. I still got to mount it to the table and mount my vise on the top. Uh, but it works really well. I've got a total of 12 inches travel this way, and this way I've got a total of uh, 8 inches, which is a little more than my other one, which it, it, for most things is totally adequate. Uh, I did make one mistake right here. I didn't make that tube long enough after I mount my dial on here. Uh, I lose about a half inch of travel because the dial is going to run into the wood right there. Not a big deal. I might fix it. I might not. Uh, these holes right here, I drilled them because I was going to, uh, I was going to make them larger. They're just pilot holes. I was going to put wood screws down through that uh, Acme nut in there that we made uh, to hold it so that it wouldn't come apart. But I think after the vise is mounted on there, uh, and the weight of the table itself, it, it's going to take a lot for, a, for a, uh, a drill bit to lift it out. It is possible, but I don't think it's going to be an issue. Uh, the idea of having it easy to take apart is really appealing. Uh, if there's debris in there, you can lift it up and blow it out. Uh, lifts up fairly easy. See, there's the, the holes that we're going to line up with the table to, to uh, screw it into the wood. But I, I just think it's a bad idea to do that. It's going to make it really inconvenient to keep clean. Uh, 
But after I get the vise mounted there, it's, it's going to be really heavy. It'll stay put. Uh, obviously, I need to put some uh, dials on here, calibrated in thousands. Uh, I'll make a separate video on that. Those same dials I'll also fit to my uh, newly rebuilt Logan lathe. Uh, but anyway, that's it for today, and thanks for joining me. Uh, I'm really excited about using this thing. Be sure and subscribe.